Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. It's lovely to see you again. Um, Dan is just over there, and if you can't spot him, he's wearing the amazing jacket. <laughs> um, I'm wearing a rather less exciting jacket. He's over there somewhere. I mean, um, if you can't, if you can't I, leave um, your house, you've got to, you know, you've got to do something to make your life exciting, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> And, no, but you can be seen from space, which is which is a good thing because it's a yes, beautiful. Yeah. It's one of my favourites that you own. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, I mean, we want to talk about. I think actually it's a very suitable, it's a very suitable sort of flair and and statement for the perfume house we're about to talk about, isn't it? Because they are bold and they think outside the box. Yeah. And they, they're always full of personality and colour. Absolutely. In my um, my sort of limited experience. We, we so we uh, January scent project is a house we have talked about before. Uh, we reviewed um, Bervuvu, Ida Antler, and Smorderos, um, which are three, you can see I've got a few there, three of the, the, the four fragrances which I um, then bought. John Beeble, you may, if you are a bit of a kind of a frag head, you may know him as somebody who writes um, for Fragrantica. That's certainly how I um, found out about him um, first. Um, as well as that, he's also an amazingly talented artist. I'm going to put up some of his artwork. He sent out a, a little postcard to go with the fragrance, but just holding this up won't do it justice. I'll, I'll add it. Um, I'll put it full screen. But his artwork and presentation um, is absolutely beautiful. Ridiculously over-talented guy. So those first three fragrances we, we encountered were, you know, rose, as I'd never smelt it used before, lavender, as I'd never smelt it used before, cedar, as I'd never smelt it used before. And you had these incredibly creative, incredibly original fragrances, which smelt good. <laughs> you, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you, could, you, you, could, you could do something wild and it could just smell disgusting. It doesn't. It's original and yeah. beautiful. And, um, the other thing... They have real appeal, don't they? Real. I mean, if you are somebody who is interested in interesting fragrances, um, which are still well composed, I really think you should um, check out this house. Also, yeah. another really attractive factor, I think, is the, the, the pricing. So for these um, elegant little 30 mil bottles, um, they are $65. Um, and, and for me, I said this before, 30 mil is, is the kind of size of bottle that I, that I want to buy. So as, as a collector, I don't, you know, I, I really yeah. don't, unless it's a limited edition, a one-off, I don't really need a 100 mil or 50 mil. 30 mil is great. And $65, you know, we've been speaking about some print fragrances so which cost, you know, 160 upwards dollars for 30 mil or some Arisha Dore fragrances which cost over $200 for 30 mil. 65 yeah. mil. Um, strange these, love. Yeah, strange love. Oh, God. And those prices have gone up. God, they're crazy. So really good. That? Also, so I bought um, I bought us a, um, some 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 little samples here of the newest releases, Hauler and Denise. You're a good man. Um, really, really good atomizers. God, it, it's always surprises me. Good atomizers, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. There are so many houses who've got really beautiful bottles with good atomizers, but their samples awful it's, it's so frustrating yeah. so let's um so i've only smelt one of these hauler i've spent quite a lot of time with um so we're going to chat about that and then i've not smelt the other one to use it before joe has smelt that mm. so i'm going to give some of my first impressions but we're going to start um with hauler so i don't know if it is uh, hauler or oh. orla it's based on a short story by guido maupassant um about a man who becomes sort of obsessed with a, a ship, a, a ship which is being sort of quarantined in dock, and it starts to kind of haunt him as this kind of spectre, uh, you know, the subject of, of, of obsession that, and the paranoia which, which, which comes with that. Um, Quite and topical, I would say. Well, 100%. And it, you know, reading a bit of the blurb on his website, it's something which has come out of this, you know, extraordinary time when we have been quarantined. And, um, you know, I know it's, it's been a, a really difficult, a very, very, very difficult time uh, for, for mental health and people are obsessed about things. And I think this is one of the more productive 
obsessions because it's an obsession of art this idea of this yeah. this fragrance um that was uh constantly present in his mind anyway what does it smell like mm. when i so read about this and um, i saw almond milk i thought hmm don't really like almond don't really like milk i'll give it a shot see what it smells like and then you smell <laughs> smell and so good. <laughs> not that at all it's it's yeah. the first spray it's this ylang aldehyde bomb like it's an explosion <laughs> like the first yeah. when you first spray it, it's i couldn't believe it i was like wow what is this if for me that's aldehyde's it, done really well yeah for me it's like opening some old kind of vanity cabinet like a 1950s beautiful cabinet where perfumes and makeup and powders are stored imagine opening those drawers and going and it's and it's in your face yeah. but but weirdly i mean you have to like aldehydes to, to appreciate if you hate aldehydes you're not going to like the opening but for me despite this kind of aldehyde ylang ylang bomb it doesn't actually feel it doesn't feel old lady. It doesn't feel old. I don't no, think. No, not at all. It feels almost like you're oh, watching like, like a virtual reality 1950s um, vanity case. Do you, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Or, or like it's been, it's in neon or bright lights. It's a little bit Truman Show somehow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, I can imagine someone else watching us enjoy it through the, through the, uh, the, the lens. It's, it feels like it feels what a futuristic like a, fragrance, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's surreal. Do you know, like, yeah. it feels like a, like a beyond, above, uh, above reality. I was, I was slightly reminded of Rien by Etoile Pétorange with that big, like, aldehydes overdose smack around your face. Yeah, maybe Ganymede as well, in terms of that yeah, slightly yeah. otherworldly. Yeah sort of strange feel to it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, not, not, not I prefer this as, by a million, de a million degrees. Not, in, not in, in terms of smell, but certainly in terms of, like, uh, of feel. Um, yeah. But then what is interesting... It's so is, creamy as well. Yeah, wh where, where it goes from there, it does become creamy. And I saw almond and milk and I thought, is it going to be kind of cloying and kind of sickly sweet? And it's not. It's, it's amazing how... Um, it turns from this bright bang, 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 bang opening to this, this thing which just starts to engulf and hug you. And I went on a bit of an olfactory tangent with this because after I started to get this kind of creamy milkiness, I got loads of bay leaf, lots and lots and lots of ah. bay leaf. And I've got such a strong association of milk and bay leaf, which is a very savoury one, which is bechamel. I remember, like my mum, like oh, like cooking, making a white sauce with milk and bay leaf and onions and things and like that as the basis for the white sauce. And I, I kind of got this association, and I found that incredibly comforting. And even though it's it's a very long way yeah, from absolutely. that uh, from that um vanity cabinet idea, it was again something I felt really comforting. Yeah, it's. I know what you mean. It's as if the, the milk, that milky aspect, it's not really a note in itself. It's more like you've got a big saucepan of milk on the stove, and you're 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 infusing everything into that, and so it, it, it sort of it amplifies the flavors of everything else and brings it all together. You know, and I I don't know if there is a note in here, but I don't know. I get I get quite a nice. Um, like, I don't know, like a vanilla latte thing going on as well, but without it being sweet. Just like, a, you know, a sort of Christmassy vanilla latte or eggnog latte or something like that. Creamy with, with a bit of, mm -hmm. a little bit of a kind of espresso going on there, but not, yeah, I think not really coffee-ish by any stretch. I don't know, I, I yeah, because I, I was worried it was going to become that like, like almond caramel latte sickly sweet thing. And I don't think I... I, I, in terms of the milkiness, New, New Harlem or something like that. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the milkiness, I felt the milkiness stayed savoury, if if that's possible. Um, it was also interesting. Just this, yeah, this bay leaf was yeah, so absolutely. prominent around the middle, and I was really reminded of, mm. not that it smells like it, but two bay leaf fragrances or two fragrances which have some bay leaf. One is Ombre Sultan, which is obviously like a, a Labdanum Oriental, but the bay leaf note in that is 
and prominent. And that kept coming to my mind. And the other one is Opus 6 by Amorage, which again is lots of um, kind of um, spice and, and incense oh, and stuff. Yeah. But also the bay leaf. And they came and I got, and be, yeah, because of that, I don't know that, I don't know if it was just that association, but I felt I was transported slightly, slightly, slightly to this oriental um, perfume style. Yeah. I think it's really good, I have to say. And then also, and then later on. It's really addictive. It really addictive. And I, there was a, just some nice elements of funk going on there. Never, I don't think it became dirty, but I think, you know, a warm, cosy, again, I, I keep saying cosy and familiar. There are lots of things about this fragrance which are cosy and familiar. Um, yeah, mm. the dry down, the, the, I mean, it, by the time we got to the, the dry down, I felt there were lots of those, those nice things you want at the, at the base, you know, uh, tonkery, um, sandalwoody, creamy things, which are maybe they are segueing from that milky idea. Um, yeah. That milky, creamy idea. More words going there's on there. There's a gentle animalic thing. There's a, sort of, there's a sort of very cuddly thing. Like, yeah. you know, um, Bengal Rouge by, uh, by Papillon. Papillon. Something of that warm animalic thing. Mm. Yeah. Not funky at all, but just a warm skin smell. Yeah. Mm, I really love that a lot. And it's amazing that, you know, when you... I'd pay quite a lot more money for that than 65. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's such an interesting fragrance to wear. It's, and actually, even though the, the, when I first sprayed it, I thought, wow, this is a big, wild, bombastic, um, theatrical fragrance. But actually, it's not. It's, it's actually a very easy to wear, comforting, sexy, familiar fragrance, I thought. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's first rate. Absolutely first rate. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. So I have not... That was Hola or Ola or Hola. Um, uh, I have not smelt this other one, so I'm going to let you um, talk me through it a bit. Well, yeah, I mean... Who does it? See what you think. I, like, I love this one, and I, I, I was saying to Dan just now, the thing that I loved so much about this was that it felt so familiar in terms of Ooh, the yeah. really classical 80s um, cologne oh, yeah, yeah, style yeah. things. Yeah. It, you know, it's, do you know what I mean? It, I, there's, there's something about it that's so <sighs> incredibly familiar. Yes, absolutely. But done brilliantly. And, you know, bright and fennelly and, and aquatic. Absolutely. Bergamotty, fennelly, something a tiny bit spicy. Yeah, mm. I f and I found, I mean, yeah. this has been on for a few hours now. It's the second time I've worn it. I found that there's, there's this incredible Ooh, yeah. sort of dirty, dirty honey thing going on in the base, which Ooh. I love. And it, it, yeah. it's there all the way through, but it kind of just gets more and more round and, oh. And it feels like, it, it feels like what I would imagine a vintage... Mm. You know, vintage uh, Chanel Paul Monsieur would smell like, or mm. possibly not even that, possibly Eau Sauvage or something like that. Absolutely. This is, yeah, this is a great, this is, um, this is, a, you know, a, a kind of a freshie for someone who doesn't like freshies, really, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's, it, there's yeah, a, yeah, totally. There's, there, there's, it feels like there's quite a nice kind of floral complexity. I mean, I'm only just smelling it, you know, I've only just sprayed it on the card. But it feels like there is, mm. it, it, it immediately, I've gone into, um, if almost, if it, there was some bergamot at the top, but it feels like I've slightly skipped the top already and I've gone into this nice, um, slightly floral, yeah. slightly kind of fennelly spiced mid herbal. Reminds me of Haeckel's, you know, those, that, that, that kind of seaside feel. You yeah. Know, as if, this isn't so much seaweedy, but. Absolutely. You know, wild flowers by the sea. A slight, again... It's, like, yeah, it's, it's an incredible thing of getting it... Go on, sorry. No, 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 you go, you go. I was just going to say, it, it somehow does the, the aquatic thing, but in a really realistic sense of, of, like, of wood and saltiness and, and seaweed mm. and, and flower life that might be living around the, the coastline. 
and yet and then somehow something animalic underneath it all something something quite dirty i you know i get mm. more and more now this slightly it's honey this sort of dirty jasmine honey combo yeah even which again um, i find really addictive this is only my first impressions, but there feels like there is maybe a little something ambery and and golden and sexy at the bottom of that. Yeah, oh, it really. I get. I what I'm picturing is is a is you know a remote, you know like Scottish Hebrides or something like that. I'm I'm thinking of wild flowers and herbs which are almost in the sea with the, being Absolutely. bashed by the bashed by the the wind and the sea breeze. Not lush flowers at all. Mm. There's a bitterness. There's like there's lots of herbs amongst the flowers and then maybe like throughout yeah, the day the sun comes out and the start to you get the natural slight animalic hum of the sea is maybe the seaweed is dried in the sun a little bit warmed up do you know what's interesting as well i don't you'll get this later on in the dry down but somehow it also does this amazing trick of, of smelling like if you want it to smelling like a really salty herbaceous aquatic-y sort of thing but mm. now i'm smelling it and i'm getting like forest floor shepra yeah well, I do, it's, I, oh. it's really weird mm. i do i do feel there are definitely some flowers swimming around in quite a traditional masculine like 80s masculine way yeah it does feel like it doesn't it mm. Well, I get quite a coumarin-y sort of thing, but I don't think there is any in there. I don't know. But maybe there's this um, oh. sort of like slightly tonkery roundness in it that is doing that effect. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm get, I get real now forest floor, forest floor sheep, like mushroom and, and sort of earthy, damp qualities. Bizarre. I don't these, know how, I mean, how he's done it. These are... Yeah, really great. <laughs> These are really great fragrances. Yeah. And, you know, and as, we, as we said at the start of this video, if we, if we compare them to lots of the other fragrances, which are twice, three times the price, and maybe even more, they um, yeah. put, put them to shame, actually, don't they? No, con no contest. I think, I think this is, if you wanted to say what's an mm. you know, absolutely Premier League example of perfume making on a good budget, this would be up there. You know, I'd I'd pay I'd pay twice this price for these without yep. blinking. Excellent. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, really exciting. I think I think he had said at some point he's got some slightly ambery projects coming up, some ambery kind of oh, good. project. So it'd be very interesting to see. But each fragrance, I mean, in in a way, I mean, I've I've. I'm only going on my first impressions of the uh, 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 Denuzit, but that fi this feels Denuzit feels a little bit more straightforward than Hawler, which is yeah. a bit of a kind of like a whirlwind kind of um, storytelling fragrance. But it's interesting that he can mm. do both. Yeah. yeah, do you know the this Hawler on my hand is about two or three hours old, and. If you like Obsession by Calvin Klein, which, you know, was a masterpiece of its time, I think. If you like that, if you like Tango by Mask Milano, I think this is, I think this is one to, to try as well. Because I'm, ge I'm getting more and more ambery warmth and cuddly, mm. cosy kind of stuff going on here. It's really addictive. And it's a completely yeah. far removed smell from what I had three hours ago when I sprayed it on which was this big aldehyde explosion. It's now amazing, I'm getting something completely three miles away. Yeah. That's what perfume is all about, surely, to take you on a journey. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless and it's also, perfume and Roma, which is just, you get what you get for three hours plus. Well, no, 12 hours plus, and it's amazing. But also, I, yeah, I kind of bought this thinking, mm, almond, milk, that's not really my <laughs> cup of tea, almond milk. But... Um, it's, it's just not what I expected or imagined or... No. <laughs> Great. I mean... I looked at the note list and I thought it might smell like palm olive. You know, they do these shower gels, don't they? Almond and milk shower gel or, mm. you know, milk and honey, whatever it might be. Uh, Moisturising body washes. I thought it could end up smelling like that. And actually, mm. it's a million miles away.
Not that it would smell like that, but it's a fear, yeah. isn't it? I'm going to go. I'm going to ex- definitely explore this music more. Um, but absolute winner. What yeah, check house. it out. Good one for the spring, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have a look. I, I didn't even think about, you know, January Send Project for a while. And I've had, you know, I had some money for my birthday to get some perfumes. And it's Christmas coming up. And I think I, think I can see a couple of little purchases on the, on the horizon here. Yeah. What is it? I mean, Bervu is one, one I've been wearing a lot in the autumn. I oh, don't yeah, know. I want to try that Absolute winners. Anyway, what's a great house? If you've got Fantastic. any other um, favourites um, from the house, or if you try these two, let us know. But, you know, mm. double thumbs. Send them to us. Bye. <laughs>